research team has uncovered many of the barriers that immigrant women face when they settle here in New Brunswick. My family and I, we came to Canada uh, six years ago. I arrived here in Fredericton in 2005. I came to Canada in 2009. Uh, it's been almost eight years now. We came in a 2006 uh, in New Brunswick and we arrived in a very small town called Nekavik. I came uh, 2006, September. And so I came here in July 2000, 13th of July 2000 to be specific. And I came to Fredericton in 85. I moved to New Brunswick in 2003. I came to New Brunswick in uh, February 2010. Uh, I came to Canada in 1962, in Ottawa. I consider Canada as my home. And my parents, being Canadians, they still consider India as their home. Oh, after a few years, I finally got a notice that I'm a citizen already. That was a happy time. We had our oath taking in the um, Ecole Saint Anne. I remember that. It was just my husband who was there. And then I remember I had a cake. And then I was the one who went to my friend's house and celebrated my citizenship. I am a Canadian citizen now. So how was your citizenship training? It was absolutely beautiful. Um, an experience definitely that uh, made an impact on all of us. It was, um, it was embracing a completely new environment, embracing a completely different um, setup and vowing that this is now my home country and this is who I stand true to. So with all the love for the land that I was born in and complete surrender to the country that is now my home country. Women who immigrate to Canada face very similar barriers. Economic barriers, barriers accessing employment, barriers to creating social networks, and so these barriers make women vulnerable. My background is not so much in demand here because I was a TV journalist in the Philippines and I came here already as an adult. So it was challenging because of my lack of Canadian experience. Like this is the big challenge I will say, like unknown city. Like unknown city means unknown people, they never, don't know the service because you know Indian people, Asian people or Middle East people, they know about trading. But uh, Canada, Canada uh, small city like Fredericton, uh, introducing new thing, you know, is little challenge. So when I came to university, to UNB and I wanted to, uh, and I went to the Faculty of Science and I wanted to do my PhD, my credentials were not enough to do, to enroll in a PhD, in PhD. The, I, they wanted me to do a master's again and then move on to PhD. I already had a master's from back home. I had two, two bachelors and a master's from back home. I was not willing to do another master's to get into PhD. I said, if I have to do that, might as well just do a master's that will get myself quicker into the workforce. There are uh, significant challenges, of course, especially uh, cultural shock, cultural sensitivities uh, are, are important challenges. The first year of my life in Canada was very hard. Uh, for one full year, I just cried because in my head, half of my heart was still in India and half was here because I did not choose to come here. I came here because I got married to a person who was settled in Canada. So um, it was very hard because in my, in my head, I have, was still not settled. Plus everything, it's a, it's a totally different world. The language is different, you wear different attires, you talk different, you eat different. Half of my spices were not available here. I, my phone bills were equal to my utility bills. They were so high because that was my only way to connect back home. And my daughter uh, was a foreigner and new, newcomers. So she didn't have many kids, many friends. 
they've bullied her sometimes, and uh, some students may made a joke with uh, like ethnic <laughs> topics. Um, it was really tough to straddle that line between your parents' culture and the mainstream culture, your own culture. Um, and I think like for girls, there's some added pressures in terms of um, like the girls were more heavily controlled and monitored than the boys were in the community. Growing up with Indian parents in a Canadian society or an American society, um, here when, when I go to school, I'm taught, okay, you can be whatever you want to be. In an Indian traditional family, um, yes, the hard work is there, you can achieve your goals, but there's a really structured guidance that you have to fo follow. Um, and that's this challenge I face, is choosing and making these decisions that are acceptable in the Indian values, and as well um, having that sort of liberty to dream and achieve and be passionate. Um, there are other challenges. Women don't have information about the services that are available. I've been here 12 years. I only got a family doctor last year. So in my 12th year, that's when I finally got my family, family doctor. And it was even accidental. When I called to the program, uh, they were not really kind to me. And they said, oh, your category is this one. If not, uh, you can't. And anything else? Do you have any questions? They forced me to hang up. And after I hang up, oh, I had to ask them this, 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 because my brain didn't <laughs> really work that fast. When we came here, I think uh, the f for the first week, uh, we decided uh, to just uh, find out uh, the Chinese community. So we went to Mat Culture Association and we were given a number. After I called the number, I was told that there, there was no such a community. So my husband and I, we thought, so uh, such communities that does not exist at all. And then after we stayed here for two years, we realized there was a Chinese community. Actually, there was a very big one. So my husband and I, we just joined the association. I didn't really know who I should be speaking to, who I should be going to, because you just come here and you're completely new. Uh, my husband went to work right away and he knew his way around, but he wouldn't share that with me. Um, he was very satisfied that I was pretty much stuck in the house and didn't really have anything else to do. So I was, it was like being on your own essentially and you don't know anybody, you don't have any network and you don't um, really have an outlet and I know that they say all the information is online but you have to have an idea of where to look. Didn't know where to look for that information um, and didn't even know what avenues existed to get help if I needed it cultural and social uh, problems uh, or factors have much more bearing on um, domestic violence or mental health issues rather than the clinical symptoms alone. So these were like literally three women that I knew, nobody else. And um, I think I would of course tell them this is what's happening in the house. And the two of them again were of the same background. So I think they weren't so shocked by it because they'd heard it all before. The only way for me to have gained that autonomy was to go back to work, to be, to have a workplace to study, which is exactly what they made it so difficult for me to do. And because you come, your qualifications are not up to par, I wouldn't have been able to do anything in the professional space anyways until I finished, finished my education. So it was, it, was, um, it was a really, really bad situation. And I knew that, and I kept thinking, maybe it's going to get better, and it didn't get better. When I went out, people saw me wearing a sari, and that's the only dress I have that time. And they will, in downtown, they will come and look at me, 
admire my dress and then they ask me the questions why are you here this country is so cold are you going to stay here it was difficult question but it's not only once whenever i went out they are asking me the same question and then they will advise me that this country is not for you so that made me think how do i answer these questions and there was no other asian or indian even there are only couple of families but there were uh, unb we are having a uh, south asian students so they were kind of my what like a social circle i started going in the university and uh, joined some cultural club faculty club so but still always i was thinking today they are asking me this question and when they ask to my children when they go to school how my children are going to reply why we are here and when are we going back despite many of the barriers that they face here either having their credentials recognized having their um, finding affordable housing or child care looking for doctors and and access to health care here all of these barriers they um, face and many, many overcome them because of their remarkable resiliency. Back then, they had the, the news, the community news channel. And I started as a volunteer, and then I eventually got hired. And that was a big break for me because the, the management even gave me an opportunity to host one program. And also I was, able to do a lot of the things I used to do and I was able to use my skills. It's, I will tell it's a big challenge but I overcome I think and right now if you go anywhere in Fredericton, if, if in uh, any spa, everybody knows what is trading and everybody like when I go to the show I remember like in eight years ago they said oh what she's doing but now when I go and she said, oh, I know trading, this is trading, you know, they tell their friends, this is trading, this, I know her, I know this, like, you know, now all, almost lots of people knows about trading. So I think, um, and even know my name too. I volunteer in many different organizations. For example, I am uh, one of the organiz organizers in a, in a, a volleyball club. So I'm responsible for all the finance and the, the schedules. And also I am a member of the Chinese school at uh, Chinese Association. So there I am responsible for all the scheduling. So I contact the teachers and students very often. And at the same time, I'm a member of the planning committee of the rhythmic gymnastics? First one year was very hard emotionally, physically, resource-wise as I said it was fundos were so high and at one point I was ready to go back home and my, my brother was in Newark he was studying there and he said and I would just cry call him cry every day and one day he said okay we are just going I'm coming tomorrow tomorrow's flight and we are leaving for India and then because my husband had already gone through all the stages he knew what I was going through right and he's like it only gets better you just have to understand that this is home and it gets better I would not and I would not listen to him so we were all ready to go then overnight I thought okay is it because I still do not want in my heart to stay so either I'm staying or I'm going back this dual mindedness is not going to work and then I woke up as if there was a reset button. I'm like, okay, it's home, let's see what we can do. To prepare your language, your English, then uh, you will have less challenge than the other, uh, someone who has uh, less uh, English ability. And second, uh, to research uh, what is most challenging 
uh, in that country as a newcomer. For those who have just landed, especially the women, it would depend on their culture and their personality as well. But I'd advise them, you know, not to just limit their socializing among people in their own community. They should reach out and try to befriend as much as possible a lot of people because out of those friendships will come opportunities. If you have some ability, then you have to get up from your house. You, ca you can't stay all time in your house because it's, it's not good for your health, mental and physical health. So if you have some ability, go out, meet the people, talk to the people and show your culture. Because you know, I, I feel that people are very supportive here. They love your culture, they love your uh, talent and they really welcome you very nicely, very warmly. So just sow, sow your things and go out and yeah, you can, you can establish yourself and introduce yourself to people. My advice like uh, if you want to start something, don't uh, feel scared, don't feel too hesitate to do something like you know, when you have any skill or if you have uh, ability to do something you should do, you should start and you never know where it will take you. I always try to tell the newcomers to first to have a plan for their future and also to have a very uh, to have enough faith in themselves because uh, confidence is so important. I know for many newcomers when they uh, just arrived in Canada they may get lost uh, in, in in some way and uh, it's so important for them to still believe in themselves to believe that although we are in the new environment we are going to adjust ourselves and uh, to deal with all the challenges as, uh, as as quickly as possible you know i would i would say just like talk to your kids and try to explain why if they even know like why you, why you believe a certain thing not just because like it's a rule it's a community rule like why why you know like answer that question be willing to talk to them to integrate first it's in your heart and your mind you have to decide this is home and this is where going to doesn't mean you have to disconnect with your family and friends back home but you have to decide that you want to settle here and you have to make an effort because you are the newcomer here right so you have to make an effort you have to show your resilience to adapt so you have to exp almost you have to like adapt and then explore to fit in and you don't have to you don't have to lose what you have you have to just become richer because you already have that experience from back home you just have to call out the good ones that you see here and then make yourself so much more richer and that's how my journey began cultures and uh Diversity it has been something that's been part of my life throughout. Um, I never felt that people are different anywhere in the world. If you are opening your hearts to them, if you are willing to embrace them, they will welcome you. So there are various challenges, but I would uh, I would focus more on. On, uh, on the positive aspects uh, of, of immigrant women who despite uh, all those different challenges find a breathing environment here and they immediately they realize that there are opportunities and there are ways and there is an openness in Canadian society where they can thrive, they can, they can move forward effectively. They have to take care of their family and the children and then go and study, but they did. So that is their strength. So how strong they were. And today we see that in the hospital there are a lot of Asian women medical doctor. In the lab we go, they are researcher, they are engineer, they are accountant, they are in the uh, bank manager, they are uh, university professors so is that not only that now they are in politics when I went to Parliament last uh, May I have seen so many Asian young women 
and they are mp and they are minister so i was so happy to see that's what we want to show to the newcomers that if they could achieve they could reach to that level anybody can do that so how to do it i think we have to work hard